Hi everyone, we're here again at the Conneaut Lake Bart Park and we're doing programs now as you may have realized or already saw one of the programs on different breeds of dogs. We're trying to educate the general public on different breeds, things about the breed so that everybody will make some good decisions whenever they uh, purchase a puppy or go to the pound or something like that. So with me today is Kathy Maloney and she has with her Molly. And Molly is a, all yours Kathy, what kind of dog is Molly? She's a Pomeranian but a Blue Merle Pomeranian. They're a little bit different. Okay, well, now that you said that, uh, Molly has, let's start, um, what different colors do Pomeranians come in? Uh, the standard Pom is like a caramel color uh, to the creams, dark browns. Okay, now I noticed her eyes. I don't know whether or not our camera person can zoom in on the eyes. She's got a, a um, she it's has, it's called the odd eye, the one blue, one blue eye. One blue eye. I don't know whether you can get that or not, but she has one blue eye. That's very common in, in a lot of Merle dogs. Too, yeah, that's with the that. standard blue Merle. Okay, how much does a, uh, how does, how does she compare size-wise and everything to the standard of a blue, of a uh, Pomeranian? Well, some palms are in the range of three to five, six pounds. Okay, what's Molly? And a larger palm gets up into 10, 11. Molly's nine. So nine pounds? Yes. Okay, and um, what about the, uh, we know about the weight, we know about the color now. What's the disposition of a Pomeranian like? Why did you pick this Pomeranian? I picked her because I saw her. Okay. She belonged to somebody and um, I said, I want your dog. You just went up to somebody and said, I want your dog? Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is not going well. <laughs> okay, so you no, got up and said, as it turned out, um, they had been fostering her. Oh, okay. And they were looking for an owner, so it just uh, it just worked out really well. Um, she came with AKC papers. Mm -hmm. uh, the blue merles can't be bred to another blue merle. That's one one different thing. And that's true in all breeds, I think. If you take a blue merle to a blue merle, I think you can have an issue. Maybe right, but there's something with the, sure. the liver or the kidneys that's, right. that's off. You have to get it with the grandparents. Oh, okay, good. Well, now, let's go back to, to her. Um, oh, what are they like? Yeah, what were they originally bred for? Do you have any idea? Uh, well, they started out as um, larger dogs. They were spits. And one of the queens, and I'm not sure if this was in France or Germany, she had them, um, she had a little tiny one. And they mm -hmm. started becoming popular then. And they um, kept breeding them down until they were little. And then they changed the name to Palm. Pomeranian. She's almost typically a, a couch potato, I mean a, a, a lap dog. Um, she doesn't like actually to sit on the lap. She's like right next to you. Sits beside you all the time. Does yes. she follow you around the house? Uh, she keeps an eye on you and then does follow, but it's okay. not a... It's not one of those. A Velcro, no. What about the care of a Pomeranian? I mean, because my biggest complaint that I have with people are the people that go to the pound or go to a breeder and get a dog and it's the wrong dog because right. they didn't realize. So what type of care does a Pomeranian take? Okay, it's not as much as you would think. Um, certain breeds like Poodles and Schnauzers, they have to be cut down and they have to be always trimmed. Okay. Great. Her fur is silky. She can go like six weeks and she all she needs is a bath and maybe a little of her privacy grooming mm -hmm. in there and um, Nails trimmed. Do they ever, does but, their fur ever get longer? No, and that's the thing. If you, yeah, if people say you should cut, they think maybe you should cut them down for the summer, but they might not grow back. Oh, okay. It, so once it, they are a puppy and their hair starts to grow in, then it gets to a certain length and it basically stops. Right. Well, that'd be nice. And then in the summer, you just keep brushing it out, keep brushing the undercoat out. And it's supposed to insulate them and they stay cool. She grew up. Um, on the desert, the Mojave Desert, and I took her up to, uh, let's say it went down to nine degrees below zero uh, in an area in Arizona, and she was totally comfortable in both venues. Well, now let's go back to the grooming. On her okay. muzzle, she doesn't have any fur on her muzzle. Nothing. And it's so never, you don't have to take care of that at all? Nothing. There's no grooming, no trimming whatsoever. If you choose to, some of the palms, the brown ones are, are quite thick. And they'll go in and thin them out, but you don't have to. They're, they're well, she fine looks like she are. weighs a lot more, but there's an awful lot of fur on her. Yeah, she's just nine pounds. Just nine pounds. It's all fluff. 
Okay, and we said again they come brown. What are the colors again? Let's talk a about that. A typical palm is in the, the, the tan, caramel, browns. You can have a black, some whites. But um, the myrrh is, belongs to a family of dogs. They have the party colors. They have uh, lavender even. But she's a, a blue merle, and it looks like a little party black and white going on. They make, aren't some of the schnauzers <clears throat> also known as party colors? I think schnauzers also do that. I'm not sure. Oh, poodles schnauzers. too. Oh, poodles too, right. Yeah. Okay. All right, well now we've got the basic, what's your basic personality? Oh, like? okay. They're known for being a yappy dog. Bark a lot. Yes, yeah, so if, if they're home with you, uh, they're excellent watchdog. They know when people are just pulling up. And she starts barking. Oh, yeah. But uh, in How do you public, get her to stop? I just whisper it. I just, I do the shush, and that seems to work yeah, as well as, I mean, some people use a, a... Spray bottle. A spray bottle, but once she knows the command to quit barking, she'll, she'll learn that. So um, she's a good watchdog. Oh, excellent. Okay, so the person comes knocking in the door and she's going crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, how is but she? No snarling. No, she doesn't. Um, no, she's never bit anybody. But what about uh, that's that's Molly? What about Pomeranians? Are they basically like that, or do yes. some of them? They are. Okay. Some people say they're a one owner, but uh, Molly, no, she she has a lot of friends. Very hmm. close friends. So, so she's a good know. barker and a good watchdog. Right. Now she was easy to housebreak. Okay. It well, took important. less than a week. I went on the internet and it said how to housebreak a palm. And they said they're so social. Don't take them out to do their business if other dogs and people are out there. Just do it by yourself. Are you serious? That's, that's what it said. And so that's I what found, she did. Yeah. And instead of yelling at them if they do it in the house, just don't say a word until they do go and then you praise them. So after all these years, I still praise her every time she goes outside. I just keep it up. And then if you come inside and she has an accident, she'll look at you. I just look the other way, but never gave her a praise. Okay. So that was easy. Something different, that's for sure. Well, what type of health issues do Pomeranians have? Uh, oh, I say? know one. They have, they're, they're often born with a congenital it's called a patella, a loose patella, mm -hmm. a floating. I didn't know she had it until her last test up here. Oh, whenever you were the, 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 the. And she tweaked it a little bit and said it's just a little bit loose. And that's common then? Mm hmm But now, if you were going to purchase a Pomeranian from a breeder, is there anything that you would, like some, some dogs require like um, golden retrievers, like eye checks and, and hip checks and stuff like that. Nothing you in know, particular I'm not aware of that. Okay. I think you could Google it up and go into an AKC Pomeranian mm -hmm. site. They could probably tell you about that. But she's been healthy. Other than a sensitive stomach, uh, she's been good. A sensitive course. stomach, her, or is that common with Pomeranian? Um, I don't know. I, mean, I, 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 I think a lot of dogs have sensitive stomachs. Yeah. Hmm. There she is. Well, now, what are some of the programs? Um, now, you, you were doing, does she do tricks? Does she do tricks? A little bit. Yeah, she, she does a little uh, twirly dance. Oh, does she? Well, maybe yes. I can show you that before we, we're done with that. And she'll do it. Maybe. She barks and twirls. Oh, that's good. And uh, mainly, I took her shopping with me on weekends. I'd go up to Phoenix, and I'd go into Walmart, uh, Home Depot, and she, she just got it acquainted with sitting on the counter, watching the paint getting mixed, or going down the aisles, and then people would pet her. And that's how she um, qualified for the good citizen test. So she is a good citizen? Yes. There she you go, Molly. Now she also recently got her certification for what? PAWS, a National Alliance of Therapy Dogs. Alliance of Therapy Dogs. Yes. She's, uh, our local organization is PAWS Hand Delivered. Pause Hand Delivered is the one that goes around all through Crawford County and visits all the nursing homes and the hospitals mm -hmm. and schools and that stuff. And then our one that we get our liability from is the Alliance of Therapy Dogs. So mm -hmm. Molly just recently qualified for that. So she will be visiting the nursing oh, yes. facilities. Yes. She, hmm. she absolutely loves that. What else? Um, t tell me some good things. Tell me three reasons why you got this dog when you saw her. Oh, well, Did she you like the color? I, I was attracted to her color. I didn't know what she was because the blue merles look more like a fox. Their face is a right. little more pointed. 
And I said, what is that? Let me have her. Let me, I, well, I said, let me just hold her for a little bit. Um, I just have always had a dog. Mm -hmm. My whole life, my whole career, I've had a dog. And how old is Molly? Uh, August 11th, she'll be seven. And how long do they live? Uh, around 15. I'm thinking 14, 15. Good. That's very common with the smaller dogs. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be fortunate if she lives to be 15. Okay, well, what other things do we need to know about Molly? If somebody really wanted to get a Pomeranian, why would you tell them to get one? Well, it seems like they have a sense of humor. They laugh and they smile a lot and they just get Wait, so... Wait whoa, whoa. <laughs> Time out. She laughs and she smiles? Yes. Ah. Is she doing that right oh. now? Is that the laugh? Yes. <laughs> They're very friendly dogs and people. After her good citizen test, um, I took her back and put her in her car seat and she was just ear to ear, smiling. It's an extra wild smile, extra wide. <laughs> I've never heard that a dog smiles, but that, no, I shouldn't say that. No golden retriever that actually does it. And pit bulls. Pit bulls do it too? Yeah, they I do, they do a, a big huh. grin. Well, I think that's pretty good. We've got a lot of information on uh, Molly as a Pomeranian, a, a good breed for someone. Uh, good, are they good and with children? Oh, yeah. yes. Are they? Mm -hmm. They're not snappy with them or anything like that? Uh, not that I've ever heard. Unless they're tormented by the kids. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, she's... You have to be careful. She's got the curly Asian tail, so you have to stay, you know, don't straighten that out or anything. But uh, if they're raised around kids, it's whatever they're used to. Hmm. Well, let's see if she'll do she that dance easy. thing. Will she do it no. on the floor or on the table? Let's put it on the floor. Let's Just see for if a she'll second. do the... Okay. Let's see if she'll do it for us. Can... So her moment to be a star. Oh, boy. We'll Molly, see if she'll do it. it. Okay. Molly. Molly. Molly says, I don't know about this daycare room. <laughs> hey, Molly, come here. Come on. No, Doesn't look like not... we're going to get a dance. We're getting a lot of walking. Molly. Not, not going to happen. Well, at least we tried. Come on. She's in here. There are a lot of smells in the daycare room, so maybe that's why. Okay, Kath, thank you very, very much. Let's grab her real quick. Get her back here on camera. Let's hold her up so we get a good close-up on her. And everyone sees her. And there we go. This sit, is sit. Molly Maloney, and she's a Blue Marl Pomeranian. And if you're interested in Pomeranians and knowing more about them, you can always give the Bart Parker call and we'll hook you up with Kathy and she'll help you find out more about the Pomeranians. Hey, thanks very much. We appreciate you coming in. That was my pleasure. Okay, see you the next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> the next dog we're going to be talking about today during our programming is a Havanese. This is Debbie Meyer from Cockerton and her Havanese dog his name is Velvet. Yes. Okay, Debbie, it's all you. Tell me about these Havanese first of all. Let's talk about Havanese in the past. What were they ever used for? Well, at first I want to say that her registered name is Witherow's Black Velvet. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that they change color as they age. This, she was probably black when she was born. But the Havanese is the only dog native to Cuba. And as we know, many years ago, sailors and travelers would, would take dogs from China and other places and, and take them to different places, as they did with the Havanese. But for many years, the Havanese was just a dog of Cuba, and it is named after the capital of Cuba, which is Havana. Havanese Havana. Oh, yeah. I haven't. I yeah, never that's what thought they that. Came. Okay. Now, in the 1950s, there was a regime change in uh, Cuba, which those of us old enough to remember can remember that, and many people fled Cuba, and some of them took their dogs with them. And so, and this is, I thought this was very interesting, all of the Havanese that are not in communist countries are the descendants of those <clears throat> 11 little immigrants that came to the United States from Cuba when they fled. Every dog that we have in America today goes back to those 11 dogs. Right. Oh, I never realized that. The dog breed hasn't changed very much at all. They say at some point a poodle might have been introduced. And you mm -hmm. see that in the, the hair coat, which is, can be curly. So they have a very interesting history. Um, they're considered part of the toy group for the AKC. 
let me go back, because uh, they were a new dog to America, and this is true of any breed introduced into mm -hmm. America, the, dog, the breed needs a breed club. And in the 1970s, the Havanese Club of America was started. And after there were enough dogs and there were enough breeders, the Havanese became a, a recognized breed of the American Kennel Club. Okay. So they haven't been uh, recognized much, I mean, not at all before the 70s. That's the earliest we will see them recognized with the AKC. How many different colors do they come in? Any color. These dogs can be any color. Um, there can be white or no white. I can white. so I get to see a pretty little face. Okay, oh, there you go. This is the part that I want. And there's no limit on the white. Some of them are all white with some color. Um, this white on her is not defined by the AKC. Um, so black, gray, brown. The brown ones when they're born are, can be a dark brown, but may change to a lighter color as they get older. And it is not a fault that the brown ones have gold eyes. So although these guys have a very dark eye, the brown will have a gold eye. A goldish type mm -hmm. of eye. Yeah. Oh, they're very, very pretty. The browns are gorgeous. So. That's amazing. Yeah, they have an interesting background. Well, now, we, when we talk about having these, we talk about the fact that they, uh, they're, they're fur. Tell us about their fur, because people always say that they've got fur that feels like human hair. They do. In fact, they do not have, in spite of looking a little bit like a schnauzer, they do not have a wiry coat, and a wiry coat is a fault. Their fur is very soft, and it's, it's just, and it can be curly, but it is very soft. It's curlier even than a poodle's. Who, which are a little bit of a, a harsher coat. If you wash her, does it curl up a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yes, does it, it does. And, and if I don't comb her, her little tail goes up over like that. Um, if I, yes. yes. I oh, this is another her, really good time on for a love affair. Yeah, yeah. really. There it's, we go. That's one of their characteristics is they're extremely lovable. But um, yes, they, they will curl. And if you don't, even if this short, coat, if you don't curl them, they'll, they'll curl themselves a little bit and have a little trouble getting the comb through. So I do comb her even with this coat. This coat, you can see, is not very long. No. And I trim her. This is uh, what a, a trimmed Havanese looks like. And I left her legs a little bit longer because I thought it was cute. Um, and the tail is usually held up over the back like that when she, when she moves, and it's adorable. But the Havanese, when they're shown, are shown with a coat that goes clear to the ground. So it's a beautiful long coat and doesn't appear to be curly. However, some Havanese are shown with a corded coat, just like a Puli or a Comandor, which you don't see very often. Looks like, like rope. Looks like rope mm -hmm. down the sides of them. And what I tell people when they see a breed like this, that if you would go to a dog show, you would not see this. You would see it clear down right. to the floor. And what I tell people is they'll say, oh, I like those dogs, but their fur is just too long. Well, it's hair, clip it. Right, when we talk about that, I mean, when, the way that velvet is clipped is, is functional for you. It's yes. where she lives, she runs outside, yes. she's allowed to do those things. If you had that long flowing fur, forget that, oh, you'd be like a nutcase. Yeah. Right, and that's, I, I always say that about my collie. Uh, you look at Danny, and I have cut his fur so much yeah. because living in my house with two acres for him to run in, I would have mud and dirt everywhere. Exactly. Oh, oh my heavens. Yes, these, this is the typical temperament of a Havanese. Wow, she's loving every second of this. Yeah, she's adorable. But you can see this fur if you if you look at it closely. It looks a little rough, but it's not. It's just a trimmed coat that's very soft. What's the personality like? Oh my gosh, these are a cheerful, happy, uh, lovable dog. They love to play. They love to run. They love to bark. You will know if somebody comes to your if house. If someone comes to your house, she oh yeah, she's gonna bark. tell you. Um, one of the things I did when we first got her, and I do strange things with my dogs, but she liked to bark, so I would run through the house and we bark together. <laughs> now I have to, to get a command to say, don't bark. <laughs> don't bark. My, my command is enough. enough. I don't mind yeah. you barking, but yeah. after about the yeah. first 30 seconds, I don't want to hear it anymore. I know. She and I love to bark. Oh, um, this is, um, is, she, is she this loving all the time? All the time, yes. Now, if I came to your house, because we're a little bit different here at the dog park. If I came to your house, would she come up on my lap? Yes. Yes. She would greet you and she would love you and, and she would be very friendly. 
And, uh, and she recently became a therapy dog. And that's one she of the did. reasons that I considered her for that when I got her was because of this amazing love of people. I mean, you could have her with kids. She would love and play, you know, run and play with kids. But she will also, when you want to watch TV, sit down and she falls asleep next to me. One of the tests that occur with therapy dogs, once they are initially evaluated, then they visit with us three times. Yes. And we actually let her get away with not visiting quite that number of times because after one, she was excellent. Yes, she, she just, she just sucked, nailed it. She was wonderful. She yes. just, she's a great therapy dog. Now, if you go to um, Liberty Street, will you be able to put her on the bed? Yes, yes. In fact, I sometimes carry a towel with me right. if I do uh, the Meadville Rehab Center. Right. Because if they want the dog up, I lay a towel down and she will just sit and let them pet her. People really Most like of that. the time I hold her, but some of them are down a little right. bit. I lay a right. towel and then I'll put her up. Yeah. What are some uh, health issues of a Havanese? Well, what they, what they tell you is if you're going to buy a Havanese puppy, you want the puppy checked for eyes, hips, uh, and there's one other thing, eyes, hips, and heart. What about with the eyes? What's the story with the eyes? I absolutely don't know. Be and huh. the reason I say that is because even though it says to have it checked, in my research, I have not found anything that says that this breed has some kind of health problems. So for example, with the Goldens, you might get uh, cancer. Or eyes or hips or anything right, like that. Right, right. And, and, but, um, with this breed, you won't see an ongoing health problem that is something that you have to watch for. But they do re recommend that the puppies get checked for, you know, hips and eyes and heart just as a general. And, and not only this breed, everybody, if you're going to yes. get a dog and yes. you're going to a breeder, you want to see the mother, you want to see the father, you yes. want to see how the mother and father of the puppy interacts with you, with other people, and all so, kind of things. You're so, just not, you know, the classic line you hear from the breeder or, oh, my dogs aren't available right now or they yeah, can't see yeah. them, and that, that should be a red flag to anybody who's going to a breeder to get a dog. You want to see the mother and father, and if they breed, you want to see how they're kept, where yes. they live, and all those the things kennels, that are all, everything. also very, yeah. very important. Well, she is, um, her, her registered name is Witherow's Black Velvet, and Witherow's do raise these, they're up in Erie. When we went to visit, they had 12 Havanese, and they all live in the house with them. Every one of them has, they have a dog door that they have an area they can go out, and every one of them gets a walk in the woods in the evening. So I knew when I went there that these dogs were very much attuned to humans and their habits. They even had three cats in the house, so the fact that I have barn cats isn't an issue at all with her. What's the range of cost of buying the Havanese? I would say they range from maybe 800. To a uh, lot more. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, she was a, uh, a breeding dog. She had had her second litter. And at the time, I had a 16-year-old dog at home. Mm -hmm. So I called them to say, are you going to have any puppies in 2018? Because I can't have a puppy with this old dog. And they said, would you be interested in a rehomed female? And I said, absolutely. And this is the best kept secret in the dog world. I was just going to say, we, yes. should we share it with the people? Yes, we should tell them. Let's tell them again how that works. You go well, and you talk to a breeder. You talk to a breeder. If you have a, if you have a puppy or a breed that you like, then you, you talk to the breeder and you indicate you're interested. And you can ask them, are you going to retire any of your breeding stock? And it is not uncommon that they will look for really good pet homes mm -hmm. for the dogs that they uh, that they've used for breeding. And in this particular case, uh, this woman doesn't breed more than two times. Mm -hmm. She gets two litters out and then she finds them a nice home. So we lucked into this because at the time I was thinking I would wait for a puppy. And we brought her into the house. She had, after her puppies were gone, we went and got her. And she was like a little mama to our 16-year-old dog. Aww. She never jumped her or, or scared her, but she would go over and sniff her, and I have a, a, a Newfoundland, and she was scared of him for about a week. Well, how much does um, oh, like, Isaac weigh? Yeah, he's like 135. There you go. She's like 14. I can't imagine why you were concerned about that. Yeah, dog. but it took her a week, and now if she wants petted, she'll yeah, he's in front of me. She just jumps up on his side and <laughs> puts her feet on him. Yeah. She's not the least bit afraid of him. Well, going back to that uh, best kept secret, I know that my breeder of collies does the same thing. Oh, does and she? she will show them or maybe get, show them a little bit or do some stuff and then breed them usually after the second or third litter. She's done. She's she another one. It's funny, her only condition is you have to have a fenced in yard. 
So she yeah, will give yes. it to a good house, but a good home, but she wants to also make sure it has a fenced in yard with a collar. Yeah, yeah. So, we um, do, but that wasn't one of her conditions. We, we do have a fenced in yard. Right, I knew you did. But um, that wasn't a condition. But it, what, what we had to do was we had to sign an agreement. We had to take her home for 30 days and then call her and let her know how things were working. She didn't just end it. You know, we did had you, to stay in touch. Did you have to spade it? Or was she paid when you got her? The agreement that we had, we had a sign. And this is common too. This is common. Our agreement was that um, we would take her home and we had her for 30 days. The agreement said that if she worked out and we agreed, then we had her spayed, we had her teeth cleaned, and we had her chipped, and she signed her over to us. Under those conditions. Under those conditions. Well, so I had to, we had to prove that we had her neutered and right. everything. Uh, and that is so that somebody doesn't take a dog and then become a puppy mill with it. Right. So right. she's neutered now, she's spayed, and has teeth. Clean teeth, look at those beautiful teeth. Beautiful look at those teeth. teeth. Yes. <laughs> well, now, what does she, is she doing any other training with you? You took her to training class. I took her to training class. Why did you take her to training class? Just for fun. But how old was she? Three? Three. She yeah. had some stuff she had to learn socializing? Was that an issue? No, not really. I just wanted to know some commands because she didn't have, know any commands. Does she know anything now? No, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> she probably has selective hearing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, selective commands. That's how yeah, they all are. Turn your back to the camera, why don't you? Let's turn you around this way. <laughs> is there anything else we should know about a Havanese? I think that I think she is darling, and I always I have so many dogs that are in our therapy program, and I would say the same thing to Debbie that I say to many of the owners. I say, your dog I like, you not so much, but the dog we need the dog in our program yeah, because she yeah. is a real lover and she is fantastic as a therapy dog. Well, and I, I found out about her from a friend of mine who had a, a brown Havanese puppy. And that was when I first learned of the breed. And so I, I don't know, I haven't met a lot of them, mm -hmm. but what I have found is this is what you get. You get a happy, cheerful, wow. even temperament, good with children, just an amazing family dog. As I said, they're in the toy group. And, and with rare exception, the dogs in the toy group are bred to love us. That's it. They well, have no function but to love us. And that's exactly <laughs> what she does. What is the uh, weight on the Havanese? They go from eight pounds to about 14. Do they? She's closer to 14. Mm -hmm. and, she's, and the height is, I think, nine inches to 11 and a half. I'm not sure how tall she is. Another thing I'll mention here, we'll get her on her feet, is that in their confirmation, they're a little lower in the shoulder and then they go up to the hip a little mm -hmm. bit. And they're a little longer than they are tall. Um, the tail is carried up over, and so they make a cute little square kind of look. I want to ask something about the, the care again. If you did not, do you have to trim her fur? Yes. And if you didn't, it would just get longer and longer and longer? Yes, and it would be down to the floor. So you have to do it. We, I have to uh, do it. One of the dogs we did previously today, and might be on one of our other programs, is a Pomeranian. I didn't I realize that Pomeranians, it. their fur gets to a certain length and never changes. Really? Yes, you do not have to cut them or anything once that, yeah, once it gets to that point. Well, I saw that so, dog when it was leaving and I am in love. I know, and, and that's very lucky about that because <laughs> those of us that have, look at this, oh my lord. She is my girl, she loves she me. She really is. Is she jealous when, when you're with Isaac? No, no, she's not, they're not a jealous breed. They're just loving and, and uh, affectionate. She's a little nervous, that's why she's doing this. this well, that's okay, we like it. Yeah. Well, she's doing very, very the, the well. The one more thing I wanted to mention, just because we're talking about her coat and the fact that it grows long. If you see a breed and you like it and it has long fur, we've mentioned that, well, trim it up. Do not shave it. This hair protects her from the heat and the sun. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, even my black Newfoundland, if I trim him down, he's still pretty long. Right. Because if you don't protect him, if you shave this down, it's not like a lab, if you shave him down, they're not protected from the heat. So if you if you get a dog with long fur and you want to trim it, you can trim it like this. She's probably got a good inch on here at least. It's curled up a little bit, kind of kinky, but. Um, well, she's a keeper. If you decide you don't want her, I'm right here. Yeah, really she could be number five at my house. <laughs> I always have room for another one. Look at your shirts there. There's always, yeah, room, there's for always room for another dog. There you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna steal that. Uh, pe that pe You're, you take the palm, and I'll take palm. the palm. No, that palm. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. She was great. I want to turn around one more time so our cameraman can get a good close-up on that face. And I think you also gave the cam cameraman two pictures 
I did. That we're going to put into the program that shows the what? They, this, when these dogs are shown, this is interesting, we're going to stick this in. They are shown with a, a nice smooth coat that comes down to the ground. What you won't see very often, but what is also accepted by the AKC is a cordage coat, which if I would let this grow, it could come down in cords, like a pulley. And, and so the corded coat is, and it cords on their nose, it cords on their head, it cords everywhere. And hard to take care of. Corded dogs are, have a... Well, we hope we get, we'll get those pictures in, hopefully, and people can see them. Yeah, they'll be interested in that corded. Um, okay, yeah. and hopefully um, people will undoubtedly meet Velvet as time goes on at different facilities that we visit. And she is a keeper. <laughs> she and is. And she probably wants to come and live at my house with my four dogs. <laughs> Hey, thanks very much for coming sure, in. I really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>
And it's not only for the coat, but also the temperament, because they right. have such a good temperament. They're extremely intelligent. They're considered the second smartest dog, second to the Border Collie. So they pick things up very intuitively and naturally. And, you know, I show him something once and he's got it. It's amazing. Hmm. It truly is. Well, one of the things as far as breeding them, too, and going back to the doodle, because we will eventually do those, but not every golden doodle that you get doesn't shed. Correct. Depends on where they are down the breeding line. So people could say, oh, I'm going to get a, a doodle, and it's not going to shed. Uh, some of them do. Mm -hmm. and they exactly. shed. Yeah, so that's yeah. something to be aware of. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, um, is there anything else we need to know about this? Is, he is really a nice dog. Mm -hmm. I've never been around a standard poodle, and he is enticed with what's in your left hand. Oh, he sure does. Because yeah. you train him, and he was also checking out the camera with great mm -hmm. interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay. Let's talk about the grooming of him. Sure. Because he's very nicely groomed. So this is considered a sport cut or sporting clip. Um, he's got his top knot right here. I keep his his top what? Top knot. Knot. But, yes, it's called a top knot with this tuft of hair on top. It's like a palm on their head. Okay. Um, it's distinctive to the poodle. Um, but he's cut very close because he swims all the time and in the mm -hmm. summer. So um, there's all kinds of clips you can do. The continental clip is the typical poodle clip that you see in the show dogs with the big puffs of hair. It's kind of you know, very fancy, but that originated back to the bird dogs, the hunting water dogs, mm -hmm. and they left that on there to help the dogs be aerodynamic in the water and also keep their joints warm in cold water. Oh my That's goodness. where that came from. But then it it led into the show ring as a, you know, a fanciful way to show your dog. Well, you know, I had, I ministry poodles, and we talked about this, I always cut my nails even with a muzzle uh -huh. on the nose because I like it. You like the clear for me. I like the clear. Because yeah. they're wet all the time and it's just easier. But yeah, it's like a mustache cut. Right. Yeah. Well, now let's ask about something else. We find this with poodles, I know with mine. Do his eyes drain? His are not too bad. But my other, my other chocolate poodle, she has kind of weepy eyes. In fact, I have this point when I put in her eye about every day or every other day. Right. And just to keep it at bay, because if I don't, I, I, I do have to clean her eyes daily, which is not a big deal. But she is an unbelievable water dog. And I think, you know, that kind of keeps it agitated. Well, I would think with this, um, if, if this one's eyes did drain, then you'd have those marks that come back here all the time. Yeah. And it really would show up on it this would, coat. Because he's so light. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. But he, he really doesn't have bad tear stains at all. And he's so. a year old. Correct. His Just teeth are year. unbelievable. Yeah, he has very nice teeth. My yeah. lord. He, he is, is really a nice dog. Yeah, you are is. such a pretty boy. Yeah. Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. um, what's the personality like of these guys? They are very inquisitive, they're very social, they bond with their people, they want to be everywhere with you. They're very gregarious as far as a dog personality. Gregarious they, meaning? They like to be around other people, they're very social, um, they, are, they love children. They mm -hmm. absolutely love children, they're very good with children, they're good with other animals. Some breeds are not, but poodles are good with other animals. Um, they need to be socialized young, just like any dog. Mm -hmm. um, their temperament is very calm. They do need, they are high energy, moderate to high energy, so they do need like two brisk walks a day mm -hmm. or um, high energy games or training classes, something to keep them busy. If they're busy, they're a great dog. If you just keep them cooped up and don't do anything with them, then they could, you know, have more of a... So we don't want to get a standard poodle and live in an apartment in downtown Mepo. Correct, unless you plan to walk it. Walk it and know where it's going to be. Yeah, serious That's outlet. Good. If you have those other energy outlets, they are a great dog. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, unbelievable. What do they weigh normally? What's he um, weigh? He's probably, he hasn't 60? been weighed in about, yeah, he's about 60. Their average weight is like 40 to 65 to 70, somewhere mm -hmm. between the 40 to 70. And again, he's only a year, he's got a lot of filling out to do. I mean, his bone structure is still. Poodles, standard poodles aren't fully mature until two years of age. Their bones aren't done growing. Well, now, we talked about this when you first came in. So you have not neutered him yet? No, I have not. And why are we waiting? Because I want his bone structure to really develop fully, and I don't want to um, neuter him too young and, and have that stunt his growth at all. Um, and the other thing also, I do have the breeding rights to him, and I wasn't sure if I would do that. I did breed dogs years ago, so I'm just waiting to see how he finishes out a little bit more. He is a very good specimen. His temperament is incredible. It is. I, he He's, doesn't know me at all. I take him to the And he could home. care that I've got my hand yeah. on him the whole time. I night. could leave. He would be the same way. He, mm -hmm. I, he goes to the nursing home where my father is. He's been through some um, 
therapy training classes already, so he's well on his way to be. We're hoping to get him into yeah. our therapy program yeah. or the therapy program in Erie because he's just a lovely, lovely dog. No, you are interesting to know, poodles were used as war dogs. A lot of people don't know that mm -hmm. because they're so smart and they were able to help help wounded soldiers deliver supplies and, and things like that. They're also good watchdogs, even though they're not highly aggressive. They are very good watchdogs and they used them as guard dogs in the war. If I come to your house, is he going to bark? He will bark and let you know. I'm. Let you know that but then he's not going to charge you or anything like that. He's very like for example, I had a guy walk up in my. I have a long driveway. They were working on the road today, and he wanted to tell me they were going to fix the end of my driveway. They barked and alerted me, and that was it. Like they're not, they're not a aggressive. Now, if somebody was hurting me, I think he would be more protective. But just on a regular basis, they're very good natured. They don't have one feet, do they? No, they do not. Okay, I wonder if they But they are it's very good. avid swimmers. Um, their coat is actually hair and not fur, like a typical dog, and it continuously grows. That's why you have to get them groomed about every six to eight weeks, depending on how you like to maintain their coat. He, in the hot weather, I do about every six weeks, mm -hmm. just because they're in the water a lot. Um, and again, I just have a standard sporting clip. You, there's different things you can do. You can leave the hair long on the ears, have a blunt cut, things like that, but I choose not to do it. Do you do it yourself? No. No, someone does it. Someone, I, I take them to a professional groomer. And then also I have a friend, Stacy Clem, who is a great groomer. She, she does a lot. Oh, I didn't know that. And it's traditional to keep like a palm on their tail. Mm -hmm. And then it's shaved out with the palm on top. Um, but their coat is, I love it because I had St. Bernard's for 25 years. <laughs> And going from a dog that sheds a lot to a no shedding is incredible. Oh, like, yes. That is a, a great feature. You spend all those years eating dog food yeah. or dog hair. Yeah, and even Constant. though even though you have to groom them and keep them groomed, it's much simpler in the long run. Mm -hmm. You know, with the no shedding. So he's checking out what's happening outside. Yeah, yeah. He's very inquisitive. They're very clown-like. That's have, why they were used in circuses. I have one back here too. Oh, okay. For circuses and performing because. They have a clown like they like to make you laugh. They'll do things just to get you to laugh. And you have two poodles. Correct. My other female is Chocolate, and she's about six years old. She's um, about half his size. She's about 45 pounds. Is um, her personality the same? Oh, yeah, very much. Very much. She's very uh, ladylike. They're very regal in their mannerisms. Um, they're also extremely athletic, and they move very fluidly. They I like to watch them run. They have a very, um, they carry their head high and their tails high, their feet come up mm -hmm. high and they're just very smooth and um, they're extremely athletic and agile. I see him doing maneuvers, I can't believe it. He pirouettes and does all these oh, yeah. fancy things. Like I've never had a dog as athletic as these poodles are. So hmm. they're wonderful. Lovely personality. I'm yeah. just amazed at what, the, this dog is really nice. As far as health issues, yeah, you know, the things health issues. you need to look out for. First of all, you want a reputable breeder. Um, they do tend to have eye issues. They can have hip dysplasia because they're a larger breed dog. Right. So those are the two primary primaries. Um, retinol, the um, what is it? RPA. Yeah. That's the one eye thing you need to watch out for. And weepy eyes. Um, but really, that's about it. Uh, those are the two primaries. Just like any dog, they could get anything. Mm -hmm. But those are the two things you really need to. To watch out for. Um, never had any trouble, so. Well, now that I'm thinking about this, what's the possibility if we put this one back in your um, van that you drove down in, and let's bring the other one sure. instead of okay. see the other car? Sure. Yeah. We're gonna take a break for one second okay. and switch dogs. All right, we can do that. Okay, we're going to jump back now, and I'm still back with McGay uh, Cunningham. And who do we have here? This is Marvie. Her name what is, is it? Marvy. Her name is Marvelous, but we call her Marvy for short. Marvy. And how is she? She is six years old, and she is a standard poodle. She is much smaller than the male. Absolutely. But this is more typical for the female size. Obviously, the males are bigger, but um, she's a little, you know, smaller. But again, standard poodles, 15 inches from the shoulders down. She is easily that. And what is this cover? This is a chocolate silver. Uh, you, see, so, you see how she has like that lighter overlay mm -hmm. and the chocolate. It, her coat changes colors with the light and um, also she loves the water so when she's driving... Does she, she swim like, a lot too? Oh, she swims like crazy. If you didn't know anybody who thinks she's a lab, because she puts her whole head underwater to get things, she's constantly 
jumping in the water. She'll find water wherever we are. She's really nice um, dog too. Yeah, and you know, she's gone to the nursing home. She does all kinds of things. She's very good natured. Um, she is a great size. She's easy to handle. What's she weigh about? She's 50? about no, she's 45? about forty five. Yeah, she vacillates between forty two and forty five. Does she have a, does it, What's that thing on top of the head called? The top knot. I keep a tighter top knot on yes, her why? because she has her head underwater so much. Oh, she's heavens. constantly swimming and chasing frogs and fish. So I keep hers a little tighter this time of year. Now in the fall and you know when it's cooler, her top knot will be top, you know, higher. But right now, I keep now, it shorter. Her eyes do drain. Her eyes do drain. And if you look, so see you can see this, the lines yeah, there. You can see the medicine I put in there too. It's kind of clear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's it's a um, it's from the vet, and what it does it uh, helps keep any infection out and. It's kind of difficult because she's constantly putting her head in the water, but it, it does help. Um, do you have any trouble with ear infections with these guys? I have not. A lot of people who uh, do the dog diving and swing their do. dogs have a lot of trouble with that. Now, poodles have a lot of hair in their ear naturally, okay. and you, there's two schools of thought. Pluck it out pluck or it keep out. it. Now, I pluck it on my dogs, and knock on wood, I have n she's never had an ear infection. I did it with my poodles too, because yeah. I had the two miniatures. Yeah, so um, I have found it to be helpful to pull the hair. So, mm -hmm. um, but she's very good to get groomed. She loves to go to the groomer. She loves to be groomed. Um, and she's a ferocious hunter, this dainty little thing. She is a very gamey. Will she go after an animal? She'll go after a squirrel or a bunny or Kill a bird. Her. She'll chase it. No, she's never really killed anything. Even when she catches frogs, her mouth is so soft, she doesn't hurt them. She drops them and goes on. And what if she sees that chipmunk or something in the yard? Has she ever gotten one? Nope, she's never gotten one, no. thankfully. Be interested <laughs> to see what she does. Yeah. Um, her tail shows the, the palm a little bit better. Mm -hmm. She has a longer tail than Bodhi does, so it's kind of nice. But. Um, are you a poodle lover now? I am. I, I, if you would have told me 10 years ago I'd have poodles, I would have laughed. But they are not sissy dogs at all. They, the stereotype is completely wrong. They are not a sissy dog. They are very agile athletes. They're intelligent. They're a great working dog. Well, a lot of people that have poodles have either the toy poodles or the miniature. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens with schnauzers. A lot of people have the miniature schnauzer or the um, German schnauzer. German, I think it's a German schnauzer. But we have somebody that we know in Connell Lake that has a standard schnauzer. So you have a non-shedding dog and you have the big dog. Because a lot of people want the big dog, but most big dogs shed. So you can go with a poodle or a schnauzer or the combination of, we talked before, of the doodles, and you'll get the big dog without the shedding. And that's so important to people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things people don't know, like we talked earlier, they come from Germany and they were called poodle hunts, and that means dogs that splash in poodle or in puddles. So because they, they love the water, and I then that. Um, and then later France became aware of them, and, and it's actually the French national dog is the poodle. But the, the origin is from Very Germany German. and European countries. It goes back to the barbet. I'm just amazed so. at the intenseness of the look as she's looking around this room. Oh, yeah. And the same thing was of uh, Bodhi, too. Mm -hmm. They're very sight-driven. Their eyes, and that's what makes them easy to train. They're highly trainable because they lock their eyes on you and they're constantly watching you and wanting to know what you want. Um, the other thing is they're highly motivated by sound. They love sound toys. So sight and sound are the two stimulus that really, if you tap into that for training, mm -hmm. you, have, you, you, you can... She doesn't seem quite as food-driven as Bodhi is. No. She could care. It's not as much of an well, interest she, to her. She cares, but not like he did. Correct. And also, she ate a lot this morning before we came here. If <laughs> when it's feeding time, she's an eater. He's like, oh, I'd rather play. He's look, very look at the middle of the nose. How dark it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are they always like that? Well, um, in the in the blacks and the darker tones, Where they is it? yeah, they have the black color. She. Um, Hers is kind of black and also a little bit of liver. Like, see right there? Yeah, it's wow. like the chocolates and the cafe lattes and the creams, they have the liver nose and the, liver, and the amber eyes, mm -hmm. um, where the darker ones are the black tones. So, yeah. Yeah, well, they have lovely personalities, and they haven't been around the standard poodle for a long time. But, yeah, wow. they, they really, really do. They're a very versatile dog. You can do anything with them. And her name is Mar Marvy. Yeah, it's short for Marvelous. Marvelous. Yeah, Marvy. 
Look at the tail going as soon as we say that. She knows her name, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Sure, I really appreciate it. We had a chance to do yeah. both uh, different covers. Yes. And thanks for coming sure. in. And um, we'll see what happens whenever we, Bodhi's the one we want to make into a therapy dog. Mm -hmm. Correct. An official therapy dog. Yes. One of the reasons, just to add something while we're talking about the therapy dogs, is if people take the chance of going to a nursing home and having a dog that is not certified, you take the chance that if somebody tripped on the leash, it would be, of course, the owner's responsibility. Our therapy dogs, and we'll talk more about this as time goes on, are, gear, are insured for $500,000 towards anything that would go wrong. And this one here will be, would be a lovely, lovely therapy dog, too. Really a nice uh, weight, too. You keep, you're not fat at all. These dogs are very, very thin. They, they run a lot. They, are, they run and play. They play all day, every day. I mean, wow. it's, it, it's a challenge to keep weight on because they're so active. Sure. But that's our lifestyle, too. Right. You know. Well, thanks very much, Jan. Sure, really you, appreciate it. And we will um, hopefully see these dogs again. Sure.